everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Silicon Dreams 15:50 AM. I'm Charlene from Orbis 86, your host for this episode. And today we have with us Anisha Patnaik, a startup virtuoso who's navigated the legal and compliance maze for over a decade. And she also is a startup and web3 specialist and an angel investor. Welcome Anisha. We're excited to have you on our show. Thank you so much. Uh, excited to be here. Awesome. So um, let's start with, you know, if you could take us through your impressive journey from being recognized as a BW Woman Lawyer of the Year in 2023 to your current role as a startups and Web3 specialist. And how uh, was has your legal expertise shaped your involvement in the startup ecosystem? So um, I think the BW Lawyer of the Year came as a surprise. Uh, because uh, I don't know if you know there are too many lawyers out there right now, but uh, but it was a great validation uh, because when we started out and, you know, almost eight years back when I said I want to focus on the startup ecosystem, everybody told me it was a career suicide. People said startups won't pay and, you know, why are you just focusing on startup? But everybody around me, my friends, my peers are focusing on large corporate transactions um, so, so the award was a great validation that, yeah, I did something right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, with Web3, what happened is that, uh, just like in startup, right? Eight years back, the startup boom was just about uh, beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we realized that there was the space because nobody was looking at it. Uh, if you look at where we stand today, uh, technology has advanced a lot, right? Okay. With chat, et cetera, AI has become the buzzword. Uh, a lot of things are being built on blockchain. Uh, so this itself shows that the next few years, okay, mm -hmm. the laws around AI, blockchain, et cetera, are going to evolve because our laws are today not that sophisticated. Um, and it's exactly the same thing ha that happened eight years back when I was looking at the startup ecosystem. The laws around startups were not there. I mean, not that today we have specialized laws, but at least precedents have been set on how things should apply to startups. Right. And we were lucky because we got it to the whole startup law practice right in the beginning. We were lucky to actually be in the forefront of that evolution. Mm -hmm. Um. And similarly, uh, for Web3, right? That's exactly what is happening. Um, and, and to be honest, all our clients are also getting into AI. Everybody today has to yeah. use AI. Yeah. It's a question of quantum of sophistication, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you can't ignore it. Yes. Uh, similarly, earlier in the year, I actually made my, uh, one of the first investments in the Web3 space um, and that was because I've been looking for use cases. When you say Web3, everybody's thinking of crypto only, yes. which it is yeah. not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been looking for use cases beyond crypto. And uh, at IIT Bombay, um, the TTMM show, I actually invested in this company called Zolz. And I loved their use case uh, because they're going to be, again, in the forefront of uh the tokenization revolution in this country. So when I started working with them, helping them out, I was like, oh my God, this is this is like, there's a lot that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of regulatory framework that is required. Yeah. And which is why it's like, okay, we, we've already specialized in Web2 startups. Now let's, let's start working on Web3 startups so that when that boom happens, we are ready. Right. So on that note, you know, how do you see the role of blockchain and decentralized technologies in the legal landscape for startups, especially? In the legal landscape, uh, it's too early um, for blockchain and, and DeFi uh, for blockchain particularly because uh, the use cases are yet to develop. And, uh, you know, again, almost six years back, Lexstart had won the doing ease of doing business in India award mm -hmm. because back then we had suggested that the entire process of incorporation uh, for a company uh, and the documents right uh, mm -hmm. need to be put on blockchain 
so that due diligence becomes easy and you know the a company doesn't have to go to like 10 banks and each time give the same set of documents etc right yeah. what digi locker has done for individuals mm-hmm. uh, so i mean almost 6 years back we thought that was the use case but we are still working towards it so legal in blockchain a little too early uh, but finance like defi is actually the most obvious use case for blockchain right yeah okay um you know now going you you mentioned um you know investing in in web3 so as an angel investor right for someone who's deeply involved in the startup startup ecosystem sorry so how do you approach mentoring and you know supporting these early stage uh, ventures beyond legal matters so what what is the key advice that you would offer to these startups entering the market so uh actually uh i have been lucky so i've been a lawyer for 20 years okay. but i have kept evolving right like uh, so i have also started a accelerator program i have also started a legal tech company so i have been an entrepreneur i've been a lo- advisor of course but because my journey has involved being an entrepreneur too and that to a tech entrepreneur and a failed tech entrepreneur uh i think my entire journey yeah. uh has helped me bring in that uh you know uh sensibility mm-hmm. one second also as a lawyer you know and, and we do a lot of transactions where yeah uh, either representing a company or a fund and we kind of see what a fund cares about right when they're looking at a company what is it that they care about what is it that they expect from the founders all of that now all of this so being an entrepreneur being a lawyer for a fund i continue to be general counsel for a few funds so all of that helps me give a complete picture mm-hmm. to any of my portfolio companies when i'm talking to and when you have done this for 20 years you have gone through enough of cycles yeah right so we have seen what can go wrong mm-hmm. uh, and it's not just guessing what could go wrong yeah. right we are able to give real life examples um so which is where i feel that for my portfolio companies like they always like they just have to call me up and in one minute they get an answer that's because of that entire experience Right. of having seen the good the bad and the ugly mhm that that is true yeah i mean i think experience kind of yeah helps you navigate through these things better and i i, I don't think we can say a lot right now in the space but uh, that being said uh, you know what do you think are the legal challenges that you know you anticipate for the startups venturing into the web3 space and how can they navigate these challenges effectively i think when you talk legal for web3 it's right now uh, like the scene behind me blank it's really blank right yeah. uh, so everything is a question mark okay. um first thing i tell every web3 startup that we work with mm-hmm. is uh you're not very different from web2 in terms of the regulatory landscape right mm-hmm. of course there are um, you're more nuanced and sophisticated in technology yeah. but some of the same issues that apply for a web2 startup will apply to you Okay, yeah. like if I'm going to break it down, you're mm-hmm. going to hire people. So the people problem is not unique for Web three, right? It'll be the same, correct? You're going to have co-founders, you're going to have advisors, mentors, investors. Those issues will be ditto the same, right? It's just that uh, from an instrument perspective, you know, you apart from fiat, you could also kind of re- uh, fundraise in token, but ultimately. same issues that a web2 spaces when a web2 startup faces when fundraising and going through the paperwork you will also face the unique problems are intellectual property right because that is a domain that needs sophistication the ip laws need sophistication because so far our ip laws have always thought of human beings like you and me yeah actually so get creating a design or creating a logo all of that yeah web3 has changed it right yeah. uh, so that sophistication needs to come in and that that is the biggest if you ask me when you look at the legal landscape that's the biggest uh, concern and okay. that needs to that sophistication needs to come in uh, there's of course uh, concern around 
AML, KYC laws, etc. Yeah. But same, even if you look at Web2, across the board, corporate governance, KYC has become key. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course, because of the entire decentralized structure in a Web3, it takes more importance. But uh, these, these, I think IP is key. <clears throat> Okay, we, we got, and, and, you know, thank you for sharing that. And I would also like to know, you know, could you share your insights into your experience in investment transactions, like from term sheets to due diligence and, you know, what advice do you have for startups seeking investment, especially in this, in this landscape? Uh, firstly, I would uh, say due diligence, right? And when I say due diligence, uh, there are two aspects to it. Firstly, uh, Choose your investor carefully. Mm -hmm. So due diligence on your investor is important. Uh, you shouldn't just, just because somebody is offering you money, take it. Yeah. If it is too good to be true, then it is too good to be true. So do your homework because like I said, AML, KYC, while for Web 2, Web 3 is important, mm -hmm. but Web 3 is being scrutinized more uh, closely, right? When it comes to AML, KYC. So who you're taking money from, what is the source of money is key. Yeah. That's the last thing you want to get into trouble for, right? So do a due diligence on the investor. Second, remember the investor is also doing a due diligence on you. Uh, so have your narrative, have your paperwork all in place. Mm -hmm. Because what typically uh, the you know timeline for uh, fundraising is always dependent on how clean and organized your structure and paperwork is. Absolutely. Okay. And the thing with Web3 companies is when, when in Web2, it's just you set up one entity and you're doing carrying out business. Yeah. In Web3, because of the sophistication of issuance of token and all of that, you could have two, three multi-jurisdictional entities, mm -hmm. right? It is very important that you've set them up properly. You've set them in jurisdictions that investors are not going to frown upon. And, uh, you know, you've structured them properly. So if that is not done, again, investors will be like, oh, I'm happy. Here's the check. I'm ready to give this to you. But get your act in order. Get your house clean, right? So mm -hmm. it's very important that from day one, start properly. Uh, this attitude of let's start, let's see what's going to happen. Once I get funding, I'll fix it. Doesn't work. Yeah. Especially if you want good investors, right? Absolutely. Uh, so due diligence is key when it comes to transactions. Second is um, documentation. Uh, the thing in Web3 is depending on uh, the, uh, you know, the kind of structures being followed. Doc documentation are very new, right? They're, they're not... Uh, the precedence that you have set out in Web2 can be used here. Okay. Yeah. Hence, it is important. I, I've met a lot of founders who are like, oh, I just downloaded this token issuing document and I've just given this off. But try and understand the implication, right? It's not about just getting it done now, but you need to also be sure that because every investment transaction goes through stages, right? You have angel investors, then you have institutional investors. Now with angel investors, if you haven't done your paperwork properly, the institutional investors will get nervous. Yeah. So in Web3, I see this happen. Oh, I've raised an angel round. And I was like, what about your doctor? Oh, I just downloaded something. And it's a one pager. That'll be fine. I was like, okay. When the institutional investor comes, they're not going to like it. So yeah, so that's the end key. Right. So organization and keeping your you know documents in check is I think key to you know, gaining investments in the industry. I think that's what we've kind of understood from here. And, uh, you know, uh, so stock and in, stock incentives are also crucial for startups, right? So how do you approach uh, structuring stock incentives? And, you know, do you see any changes or trends in this area, particularly uh, with the rise of Web3 technologies? Yes, I think uh, just like uh, in case of fundraise, right? Uh, token issuance is basically... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of new uh, or different from a web two, yeah. right? And that's where uh, the entire conventional stock incentive structures don't completely fit into web three space because you 
uh, when you say you're giving ESOPs, it's very different in a web two. And hence, uh, you just can't again replicate that structure because the question is, uh, are you going to issue tokens? Okay, you might issue tokens, but in most of the Web3 structures, the token issuing entity is very different from the main operational entity, right? So the employees could be getting stock in, uh, sorry, tokens in the just a token issuing entity, whereas the operational entity, they may not get any shares. So that becomes complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, <clears throat> these, these Web3 structures are not new. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, incentivizing of these uh, incentivization in these structures mm -hmm. is kind of slowly building ground and getting more sophisticated because initially we, we were structuring but we didn't know what all could go wrong now we have seen some of them being exercised so we know what all can go wrong and it's just, just the same cycle as web 2 right we're just yeah. reaching the end of one cycle and we, it'll reach that sophistication soon absolutely all right. And, you know, with this, we come to our, uh, you know, last question. So looking ahead to 2024, everyone's like, oh, it's 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 bullish. And, you know, everyone's excited for what's going to happen in 2024. So what are the trends that you foresee uh, in the legal and compliance landscape for startups? I know you said it's too early to say a lot of things, but, you know, what do you kind of foresee? Uh, what do you predict? And, you know, especially those in, in the Web3 domain, right? And how can startups prepare for these changes that are going to come? Uh, I think almost every government has started taking note of the fact that we need to have regulations, right? In India, especially after the recent deep fake issues, right? Everybody is kind of standing up, acknowledging the fact that we need to start regulating. So 2024 is definitely going to be the year for regulations and hence for startups in Web3, it is important to be queued in. See, one is waiting for the regulation to come out. Yeah. Once it comes out, everybody reads and you can fix it. Yeah. But it's important to be queued in to the entire conversation from day one because then you know which direction the regulation may go to, right? Like, the attitude can't be, okay, when the regulation will come, I'll fix the yeah. structure or whatever. If you start following the new trend, you will know what the regulations may want. And from day one, you're able to structure your offerings accordingly, mm -hmm. right? So that when the regulations come, it's a question of just tweaking it by 10 or 15% rather than overhauling your entire business model. Right. Awesome. So, you know, I think uh, all our listeners have kind of got what they needed from this this episode. And I'm so excited that we had you on our show. And I think with that, we can wrap up this insightful episode. Uh, it's clear that, you know, your journey is a testament to the symbiotic relationship between legal expertise and entrepreneurial spirit. So yeah, on that note, thank you, Anisha, for being on our show. It was it was really nice. And, you know, having a different kind of perspective on things, especially from the legal side of uh, Web3, even though it's too early to say it was really interesting to know what we're going to foresee in 2024. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. This is great.